is it? It's me, Jaime. Well, how about it? What'd you find out? Plenty. They spotted you making your getaway. Boy, you're hotter than a firefighter. The cops are covering every train and bus depot in the city. Well, I gotta get out of here somehow. Oh, now, don't worry about it. We'll fix it. How? Well, we'll drive you out of the city where you can hop a bus and get away without being recognized. Yeah. That ought to do it. This is it, Jack. The bus ought to be along any minute now. Thanks, boys. I'll drop your line as soon as I get located. We'll let you know the minute the heat's off. Good. Look at some of the paper? No, no thanks. I never read them. Oh, I can understand that. My gosh, except for politics and the war, all you see in the papers these days is crime. Hold-ups, murders, killings. That's so? Yeah, but that's only in the city. You never hear of anything like that happening in my hometown. Is that where you're headed? Yeah, a town called Fairfield. Never heard of it. Well, I don't suppose many people have. It isn't much of a town. It only has a population of about 500. Takes a magnifying glass to find it on the map. <laughs> Does, eh? Yeah. I suppose it'd be a lot bigger if it wasn't so darn far off the beaten path. You know, it's so hard to get to, nobody ever goes there. Sounds like a nice spot for a fellow to take a rest. Oh, you couldn't find a better place. All the peace and quiet you could ask for. Right in the heart of the Indiana Limberlaws. Yeah? Maybe just the place I'm looking for. Got a hotel there? Oh, sure. Sure, Danny Doyle, a pal of mine. He runs it with his uncle. You know, Danny's the real reason I'm going back home. He got in some kind of a jam, and he wants me to help him out. But he's all right. You'll like him. Well, I'm not looking for company. The idea of a little visit there sounds pretty interesting. Uh-huh. What'd you say the name of the town was? Fairfield. Fairfield. See that bus pulling on time just once. Oh, Mr. Danny, this thing is heavy. Can I just set it down and wait till Mr. Freckles gets here? You're lucky I don't make you wear it around your neck after the mess you got us into. Gold, Diviner. Well, the man said it would find gold, didn't he? Well, sure, and you believed him. Well, that crazy gadget couldn't find anything. Well, the stuff we found looked like gold, didn't it? You're telling me? That was fool's gold. Now, we the fools, huh? You said it to the teeth. Now, look, Mr. Danny, suppose we scamp a couple of fools big enough and then Oh, we... save your breath, Jeff. They don't come any bigger than we are. I don't know. Would be. Hiya, Frecker. Hello, Danny. Hiya, <laughs> Jazz. Mr. Frecker, glad to see you. Boy, am I glad to see you. Oh, well, Mr. Danny, can I set this down now? No. Wait till you hear what's happened. We're in a jam that's out of this world. Knowing you, I didn't think it'd be anything simple. But save it till later, will you? I haven't seen my dad in quite a while. Oh, and... you can see him anytime. This is important. I gotta talk to you right away. Right, all right. But you can hold it a couple of minutes anyhow, can't you? I brought you a customer for the hotel. Oh, that's great. Thanks, Freckles. We can sure use the business. This is Danny Doyle, the fellow I was telling you about. He runs the hotel. And this is Mr. Uh, uh, gosh, I never did find out your name. Leach. Jack Leach. Oh, glad to know you. I have a... know about that jam. Take it easy, will you? There's plenty of time. But that's what you think. All right, all right. But wait till you take care of the man. He wants a room. Oh, sure, sure. Excuse me. Uh, take Mr. Leach's bag, Jeff. Uh, uh, excuse me, uh, would you hold this a minute, please, sir? Yeah. Thank you, sir. You see, it all began when Jeff got sold a bill of goods on that gold diviner. Oh, 
Oh, you ought to have your head examined. There's no such thing as a gold diviner that works, and you know it. I know it now. But it'll look good when Give you... Give it. it yeah, I ain't it. You haven't got a couple old trunks you'd like to have me lug around, have you? Well, I've got a couple down in the basement that I... Who's in charge here, anyhow? Then we... For the love of Mike, Danny, how do you expect to put a hotel across treating your guests like that? Attend to Mr. Leach, then tell me about it. Yeah, sure. See that Mr. Leach is fixed up, will you, Jeff? Yes, sir. I'll get another hotel at your service. You all want something in the room? Yeah, bed. What's this? Oh, that's a gold brick. Gold brick? Yes, sir. Hey, you don't happen to own the Brooklyn Bridge, do you? Now, that's funny. A man wanted to sell me that bridge the other day. Never mind. Just get me the key. Yes, sir. Well, now, what do you know? It ain't young Winslow. <coughs> Portrait. How are you, Constable? What brings you back to town? Did you get kicked out of school? No, no, just that I'd come home for a while. Oh, you did, eh? Well, things have been mighty peaceful up to now. Of course, I ain't saying you're as ornery as you used to be, but I ain't as tolerable as I used to be, neither. Don't you worry, Constable. I'm here strictly on a mission of peace. Well, you better have. But when you two young scallywags get your heads together, trouble starts brewing. So watch your step, both of you. My dander gets up easy these days. All set, Mr. Leach. Who's that? Oh, stranger in town, eh? Just get in? That's right. Come in on the bus, eh? Figuring on staying a spell? Well, I don't know. I might. Yeah, it's a mighty fine little town to settle down in. I'm yeah, sure it is. Yes, sir. Say, uh, uh, ain't I seen you someplace before? I don't think so. Your face looks mighty familiar. You ain't the fellow that sold that water pump to New Whitley, are you? Leaks powerful bad. Oh, I've never been here before. Oh, oh. Well, if you're, if you're figuring on staying here and want to pick up some land, I got 20 acres. That's a right smart bargain. Well, I'll think it over. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'd like to get unpacked. Oh, sure, sure. Don't let me stop you. Oh, say, by the way, we're having a big dance over at Will Tatum's barn tonight. Gonna have some pretty fancy doings. If you get a chance, we'll drop over and meet some of the folks. Thanks, I'll see you. Good, good. Mighty fine gent. Yes, sir, mighty. Say, if Columbus was more like him, you might amount to something someday. So the minute I figured we'd struck gold, I did what anybody would done. I bought a 60-day option on the property. You bought... But how could you? Where'd you get the money? And that's where the headache comes in. Before he left, Uncle Bert gave me the money for the payment on the hotel. And instead of giving it to Mr. Potter at the bank... I don't know, Danny. I've helped you out of holes before. But this time... There's nothing I can do. I haven't the money to pay off Potter. Well, I'm not asking for the money. But look, I got a scheme all worked out. Uh-oh. It's a cinch. I'm gonna subdivide the property and start a real estate boom. What? Are you completely crazy? It'll work, I'm sure of it. Up here, a thousand miles from nowhere. It won't be if we bring a spur of the main highway up the valley and through my property. Think what it'll do for business. Why, it'll put Fairfield on the map. We'll have a real town for a change. Mm, sounds great, Danny, but it won't work. You can never get the road commissioners to agree on it. Well, why not? Your father's one of them. You could bring him around, couldn't you? Well, even if I did, what about old man Potter? They haven't been speaking for years. Oh, they'd never get together, and you know it. Oh, I don't know. I think maybe you could swing it. How? Oh. Well, remember how you and Jane Potter were sweethearts when we were kids? Oh. Wait a minute. You're not suggesting I marry that, that gawky, pigtailed Potter brat, so... No, of course not. Nothing like that. But you used to be sweet on each other. Oh, I mean, you know. You always were pretty good friends. Maybe you could get her to work on her dad. Oh, I don't know. I'll speak to my dad, all right. But as far as old man Potter's concerned, I have my doubts. He doesn't like me any better than he does my father. Yeah. Is it really as bad as all that, Dad? I'm afraid so, son. Well, then why didn't you tell me about it before? I could have done some. Oh, you had enough on your mind getting through college. I thought I could work it out in time, but with the town run down as it is and getting worse, it just couldn't be done. Hmm. So the Winslow family is broke. I wouldn't say that. We still have the farm, and we're not in debt yet. Well, then don't you see? You just got to help get that road through here. It's our only chance to get back what we've lost. I know that. It's been a dream of mine for years, but it's out of the question. Oh, all because of an argument you and Potter had years ago. What difference does that make? A lot of difference to me. It's a matter of pride. 
I'd rather lose everything than to make a step toward Potter. But maybe he wants the highway as much as you do. If he does, he'll come to me. Evening. Hello, Newt. Oh, say, I hear you got a new ball face cap over at your place. Congratulations. <laughs> yes, sir. Evening, Constable. Good evening. No, you don't, Glenn Perkins. I want to talk to you. What's on your mind, Constable? You know what's on my mind. When are you fixing to pay me that $8 you owe for pastoring that heifer of yours on my North 40? Had it for 10 weeks now, you know. Shucks, Constable, that heifer ain't worth more than $10. No, well then I reckon I can keep her for what you owe me. No, no, can't do it. Ain't good business. But I'll tell you what. What? You keep her for two more weeks, and then you can have her. Even Constable. Oh, Constable. Keep her two more weeks. Keep who two more weeks, huh? Oh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Winslow. Dad, will you excuse me a minute? I want to go see Dad. Oh, certainly, son. None of your monkey shines now. I'll be watching you. Oh, sure. Hello, Danny. I've been on pins and needles waiting for you. What happened? What did your dad say? Well, to tell you the truth, Danny, it doesn't look too hot. I don't, know. But don't let it get you down. Oh, no, no. Of course not. No, I mean it. I've been doing a lot of thinking. I believe I have an idea that might do it. Yeah, no kidding. Well, what is it? What are you going to do? Now, now, don't get excited. Just leave everything to me. Good old Freckles. I knew you'd come through. Yeah. Hiya, boys. Well, hello, Mr. Leeds. Hello. I thought I'd drop around and see what was going on. Well, looks like the local gentry's out for a big night, huh? What's the occasion? It's the Loyal Order of Cornhuskers annual dance. Oh? They always celebrate after the autumn harvest. Yeah, the bigger the crop, the bigger the blowout. That makes sense. What's a fellow do about getting some refreshments around here? Well, just help yourself. Step right up, gentlemen, and get yourself a slight libation. It ain't much, but if you can drink it, I can serve it. I'll quit clowning, Jeff, and fill them up. <laughs> yeah, I'll put a slice of orange in mine. I haven't had dinner yet. Yeah. yeah. Sir. Come right up. <laughs> Excuse me. Go. Yeah. Hello, Mr. Potter. Mrs. Potter. Oh, how do you do, Danny? How are you, Jane? Fine, Danny. Hello, Danny. I, uh, I don't see your uncle about. Isn't he here? No, sir. He went to Fort Wayne on business. Oh, I see. <laughs> Undoubtedly, to negotiate with some other bank, like his friend Winslow. Could I see you for a minute, Jane? Sure. I got a surprise for you. <sighs> oh, excuse me. An old friend of yours just flew into town. Old friend of mine? Freckles! Hello, Jane. Full of all people. Well, I've got some things to take care of. See you in a little bit. All right. Well, I thought you were away at school. I was, but some urgent business brought me back. I'm glad it did. Yeah. If I'd have known you looked like this, I'd have been home a lot sooner. My gosh, Jane, you've gotten downright pretty. I'm just imagining things. Like just the same as I've always been. Don't tell me. You were positively... I don't... Isn't that the Winslow boy Jane is talking to? Why, the young scamp. Why, I thought, well, I'll put a stop to that. Uh, no, 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 Hiram. It isn't going to do any harm for her to talk with him. Besides, it's, it's undignified to create a scene. Well, perhaps you're right. But I'll give that young lady a talking to tonight. Oh, Hiram, I'm ashamed of you. After all, he's only a boy. But that makes no difference to me. He's still a Winslow. Uh, you know, Jane, now that I'm back, I don't see any reason why we shouldn't see each other once in a while. Do you? Well, of course not. You can see me anytime you want to, Freckles. Well, that's great. How about tomorrow night? I can get Dad's car and... Hey, wait a minute. You certainly don't waste any time, do you? Is that what you learned in college? No, but I've got a lot of things in my mind. Things I want to talk to you about. Well, things like what, Freckles? Well, I got you down for a C-lection, Jane. Are you ready to favor us with it? I'll be right there. Fine and dandy. I'll make the announcement. Say, you remember how we used to sing together? Oh, yeah. Oh, no, you don't. You're not getting me up there. Attention, please, folks. That we're now going to be entertained with a song by Miss Jane Potter. Uh, slight correction. It looks like we're going to have a duet by Miss Potter and 
Freckles Winslow. Where shall we dream tonight? While moonbeams lend their light, let's find a secret rendezvous. Will it be Bali? Perhaps been in May. Some valley or else a castle in Spain. Let's fly to Timbuktu. Miami or Peru. Sweetheart, I'll leave it up to you. There's a little time, my darling. The Sandman is inside. So tell me where. You thought it'd be, wasn't it? Well, it's bad enough. Well, it's all over now, so you can relax. Yeah. Now, tell me what it was you wanted to talk to me about. Oh, uh, well, do you think we could go outside? Uh, well, of course. What's the girl Freckles was singing with? That's Miss Jane Potter. Her dad owns the bank. Banker's daughter, huh? Yes. Well, looks like Freckles is doing all right for himself. It don't mean nothing. That Mr. Potter is the tightest man I ever seen. I bet he got his first nickel he ever made, and he wouldn't turn it loose for nobody. Is that so? Yes, sir. All right, I'm all set. Now tell me. Well, uh, I've never done anything like this before. I, I don't know just how to begin. Well, just say it as it comes to you. That's what I always do. Oh, it isn't as easy as all that. You see, this is kind of important. I know it's difficult, our families being the way they are, but you can talk to me. I'll understand. You will? Of course. Oh, well, it's about Danny. Danny? What's Danny got to do with it? Well, he's in quite a lot of trouble. Well, not that Danny's trouble's got to do with us. Well, you see, your dad and my dad are road commissioners. Now, I thought if, if you'd put in a few good words... Is, is that all you had to tell me? Yes, yeah, sure. I said it was important. What else is there to talk about? What else? I thought, all the time I thought you... Freckles went home, you're the most selfish, contemptible... You're horrible, and I hope I never see you again. But what did... Well, what's wrong with her? Well, there isn't anything wrong with her. I'm the one who's all haywire. Well, what'd you do? What'd you say to her? Apparently the wrong thing. Anyhow, you can forget that brilliant idea I had. It didn't work. What's the matter, boys? Something wrong? You'll never know. I wouldn't be too sure about that. Jeff just told me all about the mortgage and the highway you want to put through here. You know, I might be able to help you out on that little matter. Well, how do you mean, help us out? Well, I've been investigating the situation. This town's got a lot of possibilities if, as you say, you can bring the highway through. Yeah, it is. I suppose I tell you I think I can arrange it. What? Do you mean that? Not making any promises. I've got a friend in Chicago, a financier, as you might say. He's looking for a spot like this, make an investment. He is? No fooling? I'll get in touch with him right away. Boy! Yeah, we is, Mr. Quigley. Well, this is Fairfield. Quigley. Glad to see you. How do you do, Leach? I got your wire this morning. Naturally. Oh, by the way, these are the two boys I wrote you about. Mr. Winslow and Mr. Doyle. Glad to know you, Mr. Quigley. How do you do? Mr. Leach has told me about the excellent business prospect in your community. Naturally, I'm open to any investment that looks profitable. I'm glad you feel that way, Mr. Quigley. Yeah, me too. Naturally. Well, shall we get down to business? Anytime you say. Oh, show Mr. Quigley's chauffeur to his room, will you, Jeff? Yes, sir. This way. 
Uh, you see, Mr. Quigley, it's like this. The only thing that keeps Fairfield from being a prosperous and progressive community is the fact that it's so far off the main highway. Uh, my name is Jeff. What's your appellation, if any? My title is Roxbury Barbersome Brown. The third. The third what? Well, that means I'm the third man by that name in my family. What's the matter? Ain't they got no imagination? All right, come on. This is it. Hmm. I don't know. You know where I come from, we put it fussy. Is this the best you got? You either touched in the head or can't hear good. I told you this was it. Mm -hmm. it ain't nothing like what I've been used to. I presume there's an adjoining bath. Yeah, just joining 20 feet down the hall. Say, what is this here contraption? What, this here? Yeah. Well, this is what us men of science call a gold machine. You don't say so. Mm -hmm. well, what did it do, make gold? No, but it finds it awful quick. Now, let me show you something. Yeah. You see, you turn that on now, mm -hmm. then you turn that like that, see? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ain't that pretty? Sure is. But uh, where is the gold? Oh, it must be around here somewhere, because the machine says so. <laughs> look here. Look, what did I tell you? What did I tell you? Go, look. Well, I do declare. Let me see that, boy. Let me see that. There it is. Oh, man, that ain't no gold. That's just a plain old ordinary common brass collar button. See, just goes to prove to you what I said. Even if it looks like gold, it'll find it. My, my, my. That sure is wonderful. Sure is. <laughs> it'll just happen to be for sale, too. Now, wait a minute, son. Wait a minute. You ain't trying to high pressure me, is you? Oh, man, do I look like a shady character? I'm stating the facts. Now, that's more like it. Because I ain't buying nothing from nobody. Except from first, I get the demonstration. What kind of demonstration? Well, a demonstration of is it good or is it ain't. And if it ain't? Then somebody gonna get a blood test with my razor. From what you've told me, unquestionably, the man for me to see first off is this banker. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Potter? Well, we can arrange that all right. Well, that's up. Well, sure, Freckles will take you over any time you're ready. Oh, wait a minute, Danny. You know how I stand in with the Potters. Do you think I stand in any better? Well, now, let's not argue about who's going to take who. The question is, do I see the man or don't I? All right, I'll take you. That's better. How soon? Well, right away, if you like. That suits me. Let's go. Now, wait a minute, Jane. Freckles Winslow, we have nothing whatever to say to each other. I, uh, I beg your pardon. Is this the charming young lady you were telling me about? Uh, yeah, sure. This is Miss Potter, Mr. Quigley. Well, how do you do, Mr. Quigley? I'm delighted, I assure you. Uh, Mr. Quigley came to see you, Jane, on business. Oh. Well, uh, well, won't you come in? Thank you. No, Mr. Potter. You! Uh, what are you doing in my house? Now, you get out of here. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Potter. I'll not wait a minute. You get out of here. Oh, but, Daddy... Will you keep out of this? Well, Mr. Potter, I only came... Young man, I, as I recall, I told you to get out of here. May I say a word, Mr. Potter? No. Who is this man? Well, he's Mr. Quigley, Daddy. Well, he can't be much good associating with the Winslow. Get out of here, both of you. Well, Mr. Quigley came here to talk business. Funny business, I suppose. Quite the contrary, Mr. Potter. I came to talk to you about an investment I intend to make. Investment? Here? In Fairfield? <laughs> that is a little different, isn't it? <laughs> I'm sorry I threw off the handle that way. Uh, won't, you, won't you sit down? Thank you, are you? I'd like to. And uh, you too, I suppose. Mm. <laughs> and now, uh, and now, Mr. Uh, Quigley? Yes, yes, yes. What is this uh, investment uh, that you were contemplating? It's about state, mister. I believe I was addressing Mr. Quigley. Uh, these matters are much better discussed than a full stomach, Mr. Quigley. <laughs> Suppose you have dinner with us and uh, we talk business after. Well, thank you, Mr. Potter, but I couldn't think of imposing on your hospitality like that. Oh, oh nonsense, nonsense. There's always a place at my table for friends. Well, since you insist. 
Good, good. That's settled. Oh, uh, uh, Minerva? Minerva, my dear. Come here. Yes, dear. Goodness, Hiram, why didn't you tell me we had company? Hello, Mrs. Potter. Oh, well, how do you do, Freckles? Well, my dear, this is Mr. Quigley, a friend of ours. My wife, Mrs. Potter. And how do you do? I, I hope you'll excuse this awful old apron. <laughs> Not at all, Mrs. Potter. To my mind, woman comes into her full radiance when attired in the mantle of the homemaker. Oh, isn't that sweet? Not bad. <laughs> Not bad at all. Mr. Quigley's staying for dinner. Oh, how nice. <laughs> yes. And be sure and place one more plate on the table. Oh. <laughs> now that that's settled, uh, if you'll excuse me, Mr. Quigley, I have some things to attend to. Certainly. I think my young daughter can keep you entertained until I get back. <laughs> I'll do my best. Just being with you will be quite enough, Miss Potter. Was there something else you wanted, young man? Well, uh, Mr. Quigley and I, we... Well, that's quite all right, Michaels. I think I have the situation pretty well in hand. Oh. Well, uh... I guess there isn't much point in my hanging around. No, I guess not. Well, I'll be running along. Goodbye. Bye. Quickly. Yes, of course. Michaels is rather a nice young man, isn't he? Oh, yes, but he's such a boy. Short up like this, leaf. These farmers are eating out of my hand. So is Potter's done. Why, Potter's even calling a mass meeting to talk these bumpkins into floating a bond issue for that new highway. In a couple of months, we'll have every cent in the county. Look, Quigley. The only reason I rang you in on this deal is because I need money, and I need it quick. I've got to get moving, and you know it. Now, how long is it going to take you to line up that bank and get to work? Oh, well. I reckon I'll be putting myself to bed. Hey, wait a minute, son. Where do you think you're going? Well, I'm going to get myself some shit out. What you think? Not in that bed, you ain't. Uh, I beg pardon? If any shit I be taking around here, you'll take it in that bed, and not that one, because that is mine. What? Me sleep in that dinky little two-by-four? Unless you want to sleep on the floor. Well, man, that thing ain't big enough to hold a little old pygmy, much less an overblown eight dog like I is. Well, brother, you better start to deflating yourself, because that's it. Go ahead, that's it. <laughs> man, this show is humiliating. You know where I come from, why the guests always get the best bed. Ain't no guessing around here. I know who's gonna get the best bed. And that's me. I'll go ahead and crawl in. <laughs> Tight. Yeah, don't you worry about that. In this here little pack of box, there ain't no other way to sleep but tight. But uh, Roxy, hey, you don't snow, do you? Uh, not that I know of. But uh I is inflicted with nightmares. Nightmares? What's them? Uh, them ankle buzzers. You know, bad dream that makes you want to do things in your sleep. Like what? Well, in my case, I used to be a barber. And I, I feel like I want to shave somebody. With a razor? Well, now, that all depends. Something I use is a hatchet. Uh, but that uh, results is awfully sloppy. Ain't that dangerous? Well, it is to the guy what's getting shaved. Particularly if he wake me up. And if he wake you up, then what? Then I'll start slashing. Good gracious to me. Is anything wrong? Is you kidding? <laughs> I forgot to tell you that was a collapsical bed. Yeah. Uh, thanks for forewarning. <laughs> now, ain't that a shame? Look like you got to sleep on the floor after all. Yeah, that's what you think, son. But I'm sleeping over there. No, you ain't. Oh, yes, I is. Now, wait a minute now, Moose Jaw. Fun is fun. But that bed is definitely a one man's proposition. Well, if it is, Moon Eyes, you is looking right at it. Because that's right where I'm sleeping. Now, I repeat myself again. No, you ain't. I sleep in that bed, and I does it solo. I'm strictly the lone wolf. Well, from now on, the lone wolf is going to sleep in pairs. On account of tonight, that bed is double or nothing. Who said it? I said it. Emphatically. Hey, what are you fixing to do? We're going to shoot these dice to who sleep on the bed or on the floor. 
Oh, no, you ain't. You rookie duck me once today. You took my money, but you ain't gonna take my bed. Uh, well, how are we gonna solve this problem? Now, it ain't but one way that I know of. How's that? First come, first serve. That's what I said. Look out, man. Look out, brother. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get Next. This ain't no Bobby shop. Now, wait a minute now, Roxbury. What are you trying to do? Give me a shave? I ain't said nothing about shaving nobody. I'm fixing to carve me a turkey. Carve you a turkey? This ain't Thanksgiving. Mm, to me, it is. Yeah, but wait, I ain't no turkey. Now, wait a minute, son. You mean to tell me I don't know a turkey when I see one? Now, go ahead now, Roxbury. Wait a minute now. Watch what you're doing with that razor. This is me. This is Jeff. I ain't no turkey. This is Jeff. Don't know no turkey named Jeff. You don't? Well, now, hold that razor. Now, shut up. Shut up, Turkey. Don't you know it ain't polite for poultry to talk when they're about to get carved? Now, wait a minute, Rock Bear. Watch what you're doing with that razor. Now. First off, I think I'll cut me some dark meat. Dark meat? Now, wait a minute. Now, you take me in too much territory. Hey, what's this? Well, well, the part that goes over the fence last. I think I'll take me a portion of that. Now, wait a minute, Rock Bear. Wait a minute. Look out, Rock Bear. Now, here is the fact. What's the matter? So well, what's all the racket? Ain't you got no respect for a man was trying to sleep? You know what you done done. You done woke me up just as I was fixing to get the best turkey dinner I've had in months. Is you telling me? Get up in the morning and roll out of bed. Pretend that there's something ahead. Just swing a little jingle. And you'll be out of the red. A dream in your pocket, a smile in your eye. You're rich as the wealthiest guy. Just swing a little dingo and kiss your troubles goodbye. Though your voice scares the birds in the treetops, there's a way you can be topped. Give out with a melody, a symphony, and whistle a pattern. Clear as a bell, and you will be under a spell. Just swing a little dingo. Then everything will be swell. Get up in the morning, roll out of bed, and pretend that there's something ahead. Just swing a little dingo, and you'll be out of the red. Sleep the head, a dream in your pocket, smile in your eye. Well, you're as rich as the wealthiest guy. Just swing a little dingo, and kiss your troubles goodbye. Though so your voice scares the birds in the treetops, there's a way you can be taught. Give out with a melody, symphony, and whistle the pattern as clear as a bell. You will be under a spell. Just swing a little jingle, a silly little jingle. And when you start to tingle, then everything will be swell. There's not much need for me to tell you, but a highway through these parts would do for Fairfield. We've been needing it for years. But it's taken a rank outsider like Mr. Quigley here to open our eyes. Rank is right. Mr. Quigley is willing to invest $50,000 in Fairfield real estate if we are willing to bring in that highway. Are we going to give it to him? Well, ladies and gentlemen, when I first came into Fairfield, I said to myself, this is the place for me. <laughs> now, building a highway is a pretty expensive proposition. But I know that you want it just as much as I do. No. My, 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 that show sure is pretty. I don't reckon there's anything in the world quite so pretty as gold. Ain't it the truth? You know, I just can't make up my mind whether to paint my third Rolls Royce yellow or red. 
Now, if you wise, you wouldn't count your automobiles before they hatch. Well, they're going to hatch all right. They better. If I find out you was tricking me about this gold machine, <laughs> only I'll do it quicker than that. Now, wait a minute. Who said my machine wouldn't work? I was just worrying about what you're going to do with all them automobiles. I need them to uphold the prestige of my antecedents. Antecedents? Yeah. What's them? My forebears. Forebears? Is you got bears? Is you an animal trainer? Man, is you crude. Forebears means ancestors, like I got. Oh. It's a fact. Ain't you ever hear of the conquering line of Judah? That's one of my relatives. Sure now? Who's that? Oh, uh, that was my grandpappy. He worked in the circus. You don't say. Mm-hmm. What'd he do? Oh, he dove off a 200-foot platform into a damp rag. That's pretty good. How often did he do that? Oh, uh, just once. The rag wasn't damp enough. <laughs> It means buying bonds, lots of bonds. You'll have to buy till it hurts. But I know that you'll all agree that it's worth it to see Fairfield become the thriving little metropolis that it deserves to be. <laughs> now, in a few minutes, our attendants will pass among you with subscription blanks. I want you all to sign up for whatever you can afford. And I hope you can all afford the limit. Thank you. Hello, Freckles, Mr. Winslow. Evening. Hello. I suppose we can count on your help in this campaign, Mr. Winslow. I never sponsored anything Potter was behind yet, and I don't intend to start now. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. However, if the folks around here want it bad enough, I'm willing to sign the highway permit. Nothing more. Well, I'd say that's fair enough, Mr. Winslow. Freckle? I can't make up my mind whether I like that fellow or not. Well, I can't. He's too smooth to suit me. Howdy, Mr. Winslow. Say, Freckles, have you seen the subscription in the bonds? I can't find them nowhere. Ask Mr. Leach. He's handling all the subscriptions. Well, I've been looking for him, but he ain't nowhere he's around. Must have gone out. Well, he's got them up in his room. Okay, I'll go get them for you. I'll make it snappy. Folks is waiting. Jeff, you got a passkey to the rooms upstairs? Sure have. Well, let me into Mr. Leach's room, will you? Yes, I sir. I want to get the subscription back. Folks, I'm, I'm sorry, but we seem to have misplaced the subscription blanks. So while we're waiting, we'll have a little music. <laughs> yes, sir. I'll have it open for you in a jiffy. Chief! Oh, what's the matter? Uh, Mr. Freckle, is I pale? What are you talking about? Is he in there? He's in there, but he don't look so healthy. Oh, come on, come on. He's dead. Dead? That's all I want to know. Let me out of here. Come on now, Mr. Franklin. Let me out of here. Jeff, don't tell anybody about this, understand? Tell anybody? I don't want to even think of it. Oh, this is awful. Jeff, we've got to do something quick. Yeah, run. Look, you stand guard while I go get Constable Weaver. Who, me? Stay here with that fugitive from tomorrow? No, sir, not me. Oh, you got to. It'll only be a minute. That's still too long. Nobody's going to hurt you. Did anybody tell him that? Well, uh, Mr. Franklin, what is you doing with that key? Well, I lock the door. Lock the door? And leave me in here with that cop? Certainly. Suppose the murderer comes back. Oh, well, if you do, that's all. What? Wait a minute. Hey, hey, Mr. Franklin, come back. Let me out of here now. Let me out of here now, Mr. Franklin. Don't do that to me. Come on, Mr. Franklin, let me out of here. Don't do that. I can't stand it. I'm a legist to call. Now, come on, Mr. Franklin. Come on. <clears throat> Better life. He's always complaining about something. No matter what I do, nothing ain't right. Constable. What's the matter? Couldn't you find him? What? Where is he? Upstairs. Things like this can ruin a man's whole evening. That's what we get for allowing strangers in town. Mr. Freckles! Mr. Freckles, why don't you come back here? Please come back, Mr. Freckles. Ain't there no way out of this tomb? I don't believe in spook. I don't believe in spook. Mr. Frackle! The murderer coming back to do his carving. No, you don't. Open her up. Stand right where you are. Where is everybody? Oh! Put him up. Who are you talking to? You heard me. Put him up. I ain't done nothing, mister. I ain't no murderer. They turn into the scene of your crime, huh? He didn't have anything to do with the constable. He was with me when I found him. Oh. Well, where's the body? 
Oh. Don't try anything clever. You're dealing with the law now. Colder in a well digger's ear. Knife in the back. Just what I thought. Suicide. A man identified as Jack Muggsy Leach, well-known local gangster, was found murdered last night in a hotel room in Fairfield, Indiana, where he is believed to have been hiding from the police. As yet, no clues have been discovered which might lead to the identity of the murderer. He couldn't have been hit out very well if they found him that easy. Maybe one of the boys followed him. Yeah, I wonder who did it. Search me. Well, maybe we'd better find out. You know, that's what I was thinking. What'd you say the name of that town was? Fairfield, Indiana. After all, Constable, don't you think you're carrying things just a little too far? Not by a jug, full I ain't. I don't know how they figure things where you come from, young fella. But murder's a pretty serious offense in these parts. I thought you said it was suicide. <clears throat> well, a man's got a right to change his mind, ain't he? Murder, that's what it was. And I'm staying right here until I calculate who done it. Heavens, you don't think I did it? I ain't saying no and I ain't saying yes, Minerva. But to my mind, Everybody's guilty until they prove something else. I read that in the book. This is preposterous. Do I look like I'd stab a man in the back? Or tell him what you'd do, Hiram, if you figured the fellow had something you wanted. You'll regret that remark next election, Caleb Weaver. I'm sorry, Hiram, but a man carving a career for himself like me has got to be ruthless now and again. Gentlemen, bickering like this isn't going to settle things for anybody. See, I think you got something there, young fellow. Jeff? You mean me? That was a butcher knife he was stuck with. Reckon it could have come from your kitchen? Don't look at me. I ain't done nothing. But you do know how to use a butcher knife, don't you? No, sir. I'm strictly a razor man. Look, Constable. I told you he had nothing to do with it. He was with me when I found the body. Ah, that don't mean nothing. And come to think of it, how do I know you didn't kill him? Why would I kill a total stranger? Aha! Uh -huh. Trapped you, didn't I? What do you mean, trap me? You said he was a stranger, and I know you brought him into town, passed him off as a friend of yours. Explain that. Oh, I met him on the bus. So you said. My son wouldn't do a thing like that, and you know it, Caleb. Oh, he would, eh? That young whippersnapper would do anything. He's a wild one, he is. He's never done a wild thing in his life. Oh, no? What about that Halloween, when him and Danny Doyle Put my best milker, Isabel, up on top of Dave Milton's barn. She had the pick for a week. Childish pranks. Not to my way of thinking. They're just two hungry kids, that's all. I have a good mind to arrest them on general principles. You're crazy. Who said that? Look, Constable, while you're so keen about making an arrest, why don't you take a look at the one man here who might have had a motive for the murder? Motive? Yes, motive. We know that Leach was a gangster. How do we know that the man he sent for isn't a gangster, too? Yes, I mean you, Quigley. Freckles Winslow, how can you say a thing like that about Mr. Quigley? Why, you hardly know him. That's exactly the point. Who is he? Where did he come from? Obviously, our young friend is allowing his personal feelings to influence his better judgment. My personal feelings haven't anything to do with it. I can vouch for Mr. Quigley, Constable. I've investigated his character, and he's entirely above reproach. Uh-huh, trying to shift the blame on somebody else, huh? Uh, pardon me, but, uh, hotel's closed. You'll have to wait till the investigation's over. You in charge here? Well, I'm a constable, if that's what you mean. Who might you be? We're from the FBI. Oh, gee, fella, huh? We're down here to find out who killed Jack Leach. Well, if you've come here to help me on this investigation, I don't need any. I'll have this You just keep quiet and sit down, Pop. We're taking over now. Well, you... You heard him. Sit down. <coughs> I'm, uh, Hiram Potter, officer. President of Fairfield State Bank. If there's anything I can if do... If we need you, we'll let you know. Yes, yes, of course. Hello, Nate. Hello, boys. A little far from home, ain't you? I'm down here in a business deal. Business deal, huh? With Leach? 
No, I... I can vouch. I told you if I want anything out of you, I'll ask for it. Harry, I always told you you talk too much. Well, I can tell you how he happens to be here. Leach sent for him. Oh, he did. You know, Quigley, I think we ought to have a little talk. Private. There's nothing I have to say that I can't say right here. We'll be the judge of that. Come on, Nate. Where are we going? Not far, just out on the porch. You keep this bunch covered. See that no one leaves the room. You don't have to tell me what to do. I've been constable of this township for 20 years. Now, anybody tries anything funny like making a getaway, it's gonna hear from me. Now, look, boys, you're off on the wrong foot. I didn't kill Leach. We were friends. If you didn't kill him, who did? I don't know. We were here together on a deal to crack the local bank. But I didn't kill him. You've got to believe that. We don't, but keep talking. You don't think that I'd knock him off before we pulled the job, do you? It's too much for one man. Wait a minute. We can still do it. That bank is just crammed with dough. All we got to do is take it. You understand? We might be. OK. But we're still not forgetting what we came for. Now, here's the setup. Don't you think you better look outside and see what's going on? Oh, no, you don't. You don't trick me to get me out of the way. You heard what that officer said. He wants to talk in private. Officers? How do you know they're officers? Wouldn't surprise me if the whole bunch of them were crooks. Preposterous. You noticed they knew him right away, didn't you? There isn't something fishy going on. Why do they want to talk to him alone like that? Freckles Winslow, you make me sick. Just because you don't like Mr. Quigley, you think he's a crook and a murderer. All I said was... But... I don't care what you said. I think Mr. Quigley's a nice man. Thank you, Miss Potter. <laughs> See, you know what this young upstart was saying? Says he don't believe you're police officers, that you're just a bunch of crooks. <laughs> Ain't that a hot one? Very funny, kid. You got any more like that? All right, I said it. So what? Well, don't worry about it. We think it's a good joke, don't we, Nate? Yeah, sure. Well, it appears to me like you just got things pretty well straightened out, huh? That's right. Mr. Quigley's opened our eyes in lots of ways. Yes, as a matter of fact, he's volunteered to stay right here with us until we finish the job. Any? Yes, of course. Well, young man, this should dispel any doubt you have about Mr. Quigley. I presume this interview is at an end? Yes, you can go. But don't anybody try to leave town. We might want to talk to you again. Hey, ain't you going to arrest nobody? Where would you put him if we did? Well, uh, yeah. But you might keep your eye on these two, just in case they get any more funny ideas. You can depend on me. I'll watch them all right. Yes, sir. Well, Mr. Quigley, are you going to have dinner with us this evening? Thank you, Mrs. Potter. I'd love to, but I'm afraid perhaps I'd better stay with these gentlemen. You understand. Oh, of course. Well, some other time. Yes, sir. Come, Jane. Goodbye, Mr. Quigley. Good day. Coming, son? Well, I'll be home in a little while, Dad. I want to talk to Danny. Come on, Jeff. Let's get back to work. Yes, sir. Don't worry. We're not going to run away. I'll take care of you, don't. You heard my orders. Well, just a moment, Wall Eyes. I crave words with you. Oh, go away, Roxbury. Don't you see I'm all tied up? Boy, you ain't near tied up as you're going to be when I get through with you. What's the trouble with you? Come on, get in here. Come on. Wait a minute, man. What is the matter? Get in here. What is the matter with you? Oh, Roxbury, what is the matter with you? What's the matter? What's the matter? Yeah, you see this? Well, this ain't no gold brick. It's just a plain, ordinary old red brick with gold plating on it. That's all. Well, I do declare. How you know that? Because I've been polishing some of the plating off, that's how. Now, ain't that something? Well, what are you telling me about it? For you found the brick, not me. Uh uh, hold that, hold that. The gold machine found the brick. That's right, it sure did. Therefore, that ain't no gold machine. It's a brick machine. And ain't nobody never got rich finding no bricks. 251, 252, and a nickel for my milk bottle will make 257. Boy, am I in a pickle, man. What in the dickens are you doing? Oh, Mr. Danny, things is bad. No matter how I figure, my total asset only comes to $2.57. That includes my best rabbit foot that I sold to Cindy Hipper Thomas for a dollar even. Well, why the high finance all of a sudden? Oh, Mr. Freckles, you is now looking at a man under a dark cloud. Who ain't? This ain't no pigment of imagination. This is business. 
You know that gold machine that I saw at Roxbury? Well, how could I forget it? Well, he didn't bring it back. Oh, well, I don't blame you for moaning. Now, wait a minute. You're going to hear some real moaning. And the $50 that he paid me for the machine, he wants it back. And I can't give it back to him because he took it away from me in a dice game. And old Roxbury don't fool. He told me he was going to stay right on my neck until I give him that money. And if I didn't... Don't worry, Jeff. You've got company. Well, pickle pusses can't on our necks, but good, you said. If we could shake this old dodo, I bet we could find out a few things. I still think Quigley and those two mugs are nothing but crooks. No, you don't. No, you don't. I know what you was doing, plotting, that's what. You talk so as I can listen or don't talk at all. You're goofy. Goofy, huh? Don't you get gay with me, young fella. What is this? Any messages to be took around? I there? know. You'll took them. You said it. Hello? Constable Weaver speaking. Yes, yes, I got you. Uh, I'll, I'll go and pick up Mr. Potter and get right over there. Yes, goodbye. That was for me. That takes care of him and Potter. As soon as they're out of town, we can go to work. I got some important business to take care of, and you fellas stay right here. And don't try nothing until I get back. Started. Now's our chance. With him out of the way, maybe we can find out a few things. Come on. Wait. It's Mr. Quiggle in the car. Oh, they're gonna rob the bank. Nothing else but. I knew I was right about that, Quigley. Well, what do we do? We gotta stop him. Danny, barge up to Potter's house as fast as you can before he and the constable can get away. Jeff, you go scout up a car so we can follow him. We? You know I ain't gonna follow no bank robbers. Do as you're told. I'll disconnect the distributor so they can't start their car. Now hurry up. Yes, sir. Jane, has your dad and the constable left yet? Oh, yes, they left just a few minutes ago. Why, what's the matter? What's the matter? Quigley and his pals are robbing the bank. Robbing the bank? Well, I don't believe it. It's a fact. I saw them with my own eyes. Well, I gotta get back to Freckles. Oh, wait a minute. Here, take this. Well, thanks. Jeff, not here, you fool. Back up the street where they can't see us. I can't start it, Mr. Freckle. Well, step on it again. Come on. It, it won't start. That's all of it. Give it here. Okay, quickly. See you later. Wait a minute. You're not leaving me here. Oh, here, let me try it. But you had the key turned off. You know, I forgot I turned it off when... Uh... Oh, did you hear what I heard? Sounded like shots. I'm gonna get out of here. Come back here, you crazy. I'm crazy like a fox. Let me out of here. Come here. Now we're in for it. Here they come. More of your funny stuff, huh? All right, smart boy, start driving. Head for the best road out of town and keep going. 
Yes, sir. And keep Baron down on that throttle. Uh, Mr. Freckle, stop the car. I got to get out of here. Keep away from that brake. What's the matter with you, Popeyes? I just remembered that I got to go back to the hotel. I forgot to put the cat out. Yeah, well, pipe down, or I'll put you out like a light. told you to be careful. All right, get out. Gosh, all fish hooks. It's the G fellas. Put down those guns. Daddy, how are we doing? Keep them up. Nice work, boys. I congratulate you. I knew right off they was crooks, the whole caboodle of them. I always say, give them up rope and they'll hang somebody. Are you all right, son? Sure, I'm okay, Dad. You should be proud of that son of yours, Winslow. I just found out about these men. They're criminals with a reward on their heads. A reward? No kidding? That's right. And all goes to you and Freckles. Holy cow, now we can pay off that mortgage. And we can get that highway. That is, if the two road commissioners can get together and sign the permit. I don't see any reason why not. How about it, Winslow? There's nothing I'd like better. Hey, um, uh, what am I going to do with them? Take them to the country seat. Oh, oh, sure. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Say, I've been looking for you. Where's that money you owe me? Now, wait a minute now, Mr. Rockwell. What about the extension? I done changed my mind. Either you pay it up right now, I'm going to make you eat this machine piece by piece. Now, wait a minute, Roxbury. I ain't hungry now. All right, I'm all set. Now tell me. Well, I, I've never done anything like this before. I, I don't know just how to begin. Well, just say it as it comes to you. That's what I always do. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Now, wait a minute now, Rox. And on a piece by piece, right here. Here. Well, yeah. Now, piece by piece. Uh, okay. uh, yeah. 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 Yeah.